What's the word, y'all? All right, for the first time in the 2022 NBA playoffs, I am bringing out the Kenny Real panic meter. And I'm trying to figure out where we should be landing on the Phoenix Suns. Are they at a one? Should we not be panicking at all? Or is it at a five? Because we only go up to five. That's my panic meter. But there are decimals, so it could be like a 1.6. It could be a 4.8. Either way, where do we sit with the Phoenix Suns? Because the number one team, the team that dominated the regular season, and for me, was the favorite to win this championship, are in a 2-2 series. To the team that was the 9C, but one a 2 playing games, and look at them right now. They are tied with the number one team in the entire NBA. Now, I'm bearing the lead a little bit. Of course, you know Devin Booker has not played in the last couple games, but still, Devin Booker will not be back, so they got to figure this out. So I'm trying to figure out where we are sitting on this panic meter. You know what? I've watched a ton of Phoenix Suns basketball over the last two seasons. If you did not know, Chris Paul is my favorite point guard of all time. So wherever Chris Paul goes, I'm watching that team very intently because I enjoy the way Chris Paul plays basketball, right? And today's game felt very different than any loss I saw in the regular season for them this season. These guys were flustered and they look like they didn't deserve to be there that is wild to say about the number one team in the league even with Devin Booker being out with this injury this is the first time where I felt like these boys was not prepared for a game they let the they lost the mental game in this one listen I'm not normally a dude that would go like oh they didn't feel mentally tough enough because I think a lot of that's like cliche bs but today it felt like they lost the mental battle in this one 100%. And now it is a 2-2 series. And a 2-2 series, of course, is now the best of three. And with Devin Booker not coming back on the horizon anytime soon, they have to figure out how the hell do we save face to get to the point where Devin Booker is back? Potentially. We don't even know if Devin Booker is completely going to be back next series or what version of Devin Booker we're going to get. What percentage of Devin Booker are we going to get? So that's the more I talk, the more I'm easing my way up that panic meter because this is a team that was built to win a championship and anything less than that I would say would be a disappointment and some of that is not by your own doing your best player your your all NBA first team player if you ask me is down with a injury and first of all a perform a day like this basically showcase to you I love Chris Paul again that's my favorite of all time there has never been a question for me this season who the best player on the Phoenix Suns was that's why on my all NBA list um Devin Booker was on the first team and Chris Paul was on the third team like there's that much of a gap Devin Booker has been the most impactful slash best player for the Phoenix Suns and you saw that today if if this team wants to win this series, you cannot get a performance like this from Chris Paul, bro. We just witnessed one of the bottom three Chris Paul playoff individual performances of all time. Now, I understand Chris Paul got a lot of critics, a lot of people that don't like him, and I'm not here trying to convince you to become a Chris Paul fan. But Chris Paul doesn't have these this much of stinkers. Of course, he has. he's been on teams that have blown 3-1 leads or he's had bad games here and there. But a game like this, two for eight from the field, clamped up by two rookies. And you know what? They did an amazing job. We're going to talk about the Pelicans for sure because this is not all about whether or not we should be or where we should be on the, the panic meter but we also got to show love to the Pelicans they still got to win these games right but um a lot of love to Herb Jones and Jose Alvarado they did an amazing job on it but Chris Paul had plenty of opportunities in this game to take open looks but he didn't do it I don't know why the hell Chris Paul just figures out like hey I just do it in the fourth quarter every time and if he can't turn it on in the fourth quarter then he's got three and a half quarters of you like just being passive and, and playing lob guy for them to win this series Chris Paul has to do more than take over a fourth quarter every second game he needs to go out there and play the ball that we know he can still play at the age of 66 so however the hell oh he is he put up a stinker and well this entire series this entire series we've been getting stinker performances from the supporting cast as well actually in game number three they sh man they were so lucky that Chris Paul took over the game they were so lucky that DeAndre um, Aiden was dominant because everybody else on that roster was putting up stinkers Hold on, I know I had the stat. Hold on, I read down the stat in my docs. Because I, when I do watch these games, I try my best to, to have these documents, um, you know, with my notes. And sometimes it's as simple as just going to Reddit and just seeing what other people have said and be like, oh, okay. I found it. This is from Destructive Optimism on Reddit. Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder, Cameron Payne, and Landry Shaman are combined four for 48. 10% from three this series. 10% from three this series. So it is more than Chris Paul having a stinker. It's the other people not hitting their shots as well. And if I had to guess out of the 48 three-pointers, I would guess at least 42 of them are wide open, non-contested shots. And the backup point guard, a guy that you expect to play a little bit more minutes because in the regular season, they had this, this uh, tandem where Devin Booker was off the, off the court, Cameron Payne and Chris Paul playing together. Cameron Payne has not done a damn thing in this series whatsoever. Today, he was 3 for 10 with 8 total points. 
In game three, he had three points. In game two, he had six points. And in game one, he had two points. And he's shooting like 30% from the field in the entire series. And I got a lot of love for Cameron Payne because I know what he has gone through in his NBA player. He went from Russell Westbrook, hype man, dancing with Russell, to being traded to the Bulls in his first day of practice. They saying this guy's not an NBA player. And he used that as fuel to become an NBA player and was one of the better backup point guards for the last two seasons. Right now, he does not look like that. They're about six, seven, six or seven backup point guards in, in the the playoffs right now that are destroying the production that Cameron Payne is giving them. And on the other side, when you talk about the Pelicans, everything was clicking for them today. You know, you had the two rookies and Herb Jones and, and uh, Jose Alvarado who played amazing defense on anybody that they were assigned to. But you know, like I said, you have to get a ton of credit to Coach Willie Green and the New Orleans Pelicans because in this game, everything that you needed to click, did, I can't even say everything. Majority of the things that you needed to click to win this game did click. Before this game, Jonas Valanciunas was averaging just 11 points on the series. He was averaging 11 points on 30% shooting for your starting center. And in this game, well, he got back to the normal version of himself putting up about 26 points he hit a big big three a big big three down the stretch had 15 rebounds and this was a battle of the bigs man um in the last couple games DeAndre Ayton were going at him and dominating him and dominating him so much so that they had to go super ultra small ball where Larry Nance was on the court and then Larry Nance was getting dominated as well but it was better for the offense for Larry Nance Larry Nance to be out there but now yeah DeAndre Ayton gave him some buckets but he was giving it right back to him and ended up winning that matchup that was a plus Brandon Ingram has put up 30 plus points and I think in every single one of these playoff games so far he's been amazing being able to take over the game he is so poised I love when we see these younger players that have zero playoff experience come in and be like oh you didn't know I can hoop national or everybody else in the in the media everybody else that's an NBA fan you didn't know I can hoop fuck I'm Brandon Ingram I was just an all-star two years ago but to see them do it in the stand, uh, stage like this is great because there's one thing to be a really good regular season player, and there's another thing to do it when you only have a couple games to prove yourself. And Brandon Ingram has proved that he is still really that nice because I don't even think Brandon Ingram got that much playoff buzz this season, even though he had pretty much identical stats um, across the boards for the last like three seasons. He didn't get much playoff uh, all-star buzz, I mean. Um, but he was amazing in this one. They didn't even get a crazy CJ game. And CJ had been killing the entire series. That was like the one consistent thing. He didn't have a crazy game. But it was a lot of grit. There was a lot of heart. And there was a lot of great defense, man. There was a lot of great defense. And, and you can tell that they wanted this game more than ever. The fans were packed out, and it was it was just a good game. It was an overall great game. Also, a thing that I like, and again, people are going to take this the wrong way, but so be it. I like when younger players come into the league. And, of course, you want people to res respect the elders. Even that, Maybe that's even an old thing that nobody really cares about. But when you're on the court, you're just another dude to me. You're not Chris Paul, the legendary point guard. You know what I'm saying? You're just my opponent right now. So I might have so much respect for you, but when we between these lines and for these 48 minutes, we can't be homies. We can't dap up until after the game. And I like that these two teams do not like each other right now. Of course, I can do without some of the extracurricular activities, whether it be Jackson Hayes pushing or Chris Paul going up for the for the block. Um, I could do without that because that could just lead to some things down the line that we don't want to deal with. We don't want to deal with more injuries that we already have. The Pelicans are missing their best player. If people didn't don't remember, the Pelicans don't have Zion Williamson. They have not had Zion Williamson. And then the Suns are also missing their best player. You know what I'm saying? We can't add more to that fire by having more people set out games. But I do like that these, these boys are in each other's face and they understand what is at stake. Because you cannot convince me that the Pelicans are scared or don't believe that they can win this series. And that's what we want. So to get back to it, where would I be on my panic meter for the Phoenix Suns? I think I would go at a 2.8. I still do believe that the Phoenix Suns will pull out this series. Um, like I said, the shooting for the others have been god-awful, and I don't expect that to happen for these last three games. I, no, I don't expect Jay Crowder to turn into Steph Curry, but I also don't expect, you know, them to be this bad. You, you saw heard that percentage. They have been god-awful from three, and I don't expect that to last forever because a lot of those shots are very open. I don't expect Chris Paul to put up another four-point game. You know what I'm saying? There are, like, a lot of things that I don't think is going to last for the next three, but hey, I said the same thing about Kevin Durant after game two, that he won't have another stinker, and then he did. So I don't know. You can't really make that prediction, but I still think the Suns can pull out this series. Either way, whether the Suns win or the Pelicans win, bro, it's, it's been amazing so far. But it is cool to see, Um, it is very, very cool to see a lot of people hopping on the Herb Jones bandwagon. Not even a bandwagon, because I hate that that word. A lot of people recognizing the, the greatness that is Herb Jones. Um, Before you even move on to the next game, there's an article that was put together by e on ESPN+. Plus. So maybe I can't read you the entire article, but the name of it is 10 Reasons 
the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the league right now. And this was um, created like two days before Devin Booker's injury. And I'm going to read you these 10 things and you tell me how many of these things have stayed true to this day. Okay. Number one, the never ending brilliance of Chris Paul. Um, I can't say it's never, never ending because today was a, a terrible game, but it's, it's still brilliance for sure. For the most part of the series, he has been brilliant, but today I can't say it's never ending. The scoring of Devin Booker, that's out of the way. There's no more scoring of Devin Booker in this series. The crunch time greatness. Now I think crunch time is classified as five point game within the last X amount of minutes. So I don't even think this game had a crunch time to even talk about the statistics revolving around crunch time but and a lot of the, the one of the games at least in game three when it was down to the crunch time they dominated and that was the Chris Paul so maybe the Suns should just keep it close and then boom they win the series number four says offensive efficiency and we just talked about them not being efficient for three so overall the offensive efficiency has not been there defensive evolution I'm still trying to figure out are the Suns defending well or not i still don't know i still don't know it's higher than than my expertise if you want to call it that one of the deep one of the deepest rosters in the league well we just talked about how a lot of their backups have not been producing so maybe that is scratched right now as well the rest of the west is questionable sure Monty Williams is on the sidelines. I, I don't think Monty Williams has coached a bad game or a bad series. DeAndre Aiden in the paint still stands true. He's been great. And the last one says they're defending Western Conference champions. I think Bro only had nine things and he needed the 10 things. So he's like, uh, uh, they were there last year. So plus one. Let me know if you were, where, where's your panic meter for the Phoenix Suns after watching game four? I think I said 2.8. I'm going to stick at 2.8. Right, let's get to the other close game, which is the Denver Nuggets. Preventing themselves from being swept. Yo, this is the, the only thing people want to talk about about this entire game was Jokic preventing himself from from being the first MVP to be swept in the first round or something crazy like that. Um, he wouldn't be the first one to lose in the first round for sure, but he'd be the first one to be swept, um, which means that everybody's already given Jokic the MVP because I think a lot of people realize that the media has voted Jokic as the guy um, and they won this game. And even though it was a close one and a good one, I don't really have that many takeaways. I just think the, the, the Nuggets played a better game. It was cool to see Jokic actually do stuff down the stretch because in the last game that they lost, Jokic didn't even attempt a shot within the last two, point, uh, two minutes. And then he was getting hunted by Steph Curry. And even in this game, he got hunted by Steph Curry down late, but he got a couple, they got a couple stops. I can't even say he got a couple stops. They got a couple stops and that was what they really needed. Hold on. Here are my notes. Though. I'm going to read you my notes and we can move on to the next one. Close the game. Oh, because that had been a thing. They had been struggling down the stretch and that has to do with Jokic not taking over in the last two minutes. Boxing one. Uh, the Warriors continue to run his boxing one against the, against Jokic and nobody else in this series has stepped up for them. But today they actually got that production. Aaron Gordon had a second really solid game of the series. He ended up with 21 points. Monte Morris with 24 points points bones Highland off the bench hit like three 30 foot bombs and then you also got boogie giving him quality minutes so the boxing one didn't really work because finally he had some people to kick it out to and shout out to will barton he didn't have an amazing game but he hit the biggest shot of the game and that was generated by Jokic. next one finally has some help oh too much fouling for the warriors there you go that's why you lost this game warriors nation too much too much fouling can we move on to the next one okay cool um and the next one won't be any more in depth either because the atlanta hawks got absolutely decimated by the miami heat this was the first game that i could say i walked away from yep it was a it was sunday and i had just watched the other two and i'm like you know what i can go without watching this one can i and uh yep i walked away here here's my notes how that these are verbatim what i read uh wrote in my notes how the hell did nate mcmillan not call timeout 24 26 to 4 run no timeout wtf so there's that um and i think that was the first half i think that's like towards the end of the first half i don't know how the opposing team can go on a 26 to 4 run and you decide let the boys play and they've done a great job similar to what we talked about with Jokic in the box one the miami heat are doing this exact same thing i hate how reactionary we have become as nba fans this is this is what my time like is sister of today trey young is not built for the playoffs because he's struggling against the miami heat one um Kevin Durant can't be a leader of an organization because he's struggling against the Boston Celtics too Chris Paul is wise and he he not blank all time because he's he struggled in this game three um the Bulls suck I'll give you that one. I'll give you you hey you can have that one. <laughs> you can have that one. the other the other ones I will not tolerate I think we've just gone too too much in the reactionary it, it wasn't even a full year ago with Trey Young's in the conference finals yeah he put up a stinker and the Miami Heat has clamped this boy I think Kevin Knox has outscored Trey Young two out of the four games which is disgusting it's facts it's disgusting but he has showed that he could produce in the playoffs but one thing that was happening in last year's playoffs is that he had other people to take 
take some pressure off. Listen, the New York Knicks team that he beat last season was one of the best defensive teams in the league last year. I don't know if you if you forgot or not, but what happened? Yeah, other people step up, which means they open the game up more for him because, oh, we can't even double off Bogey. Oh, we can't even double off this play. Oh, Clint Capella is killing on the live. None of that is happening this season. None of that is happening this season. This is what I saw in this game. Kevin Knox had 12 points in four minutes. Bro continue to come in and he shoots the hell out of the ball. That is more points than Yaka Kongu, than um, Gallinari, than DeLon Wright, Bogdanovich, Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Clint Capella. Matter of fact, let, let me do let me do some goddamn math on this this iPhone like ten or whatever. I ain't upgraded my phone just yet, but I swear I swear one day I will. There is a, that's about a hundred and sixty seven minutes worth of basketball, and in Kevin Knox's four minutes, he outscored all of those people. A hundred and sixty something minutes played. Kevin Knox came in for four minutes and four threes and became more productive than everybody else I just named. Insanity. The Miami he can afford to run the box of one and when a screen comes we double the screens blitzing the screen because we don't trust that Bogdanovich is gonna have another hot game like he had in game two I think it was or we don't trust the line right to do anything but play solid defense for them or we don't even trust Gallinari to hit his three-pointers anymore so yeah Trey Young put up some stinkers I mean some really bad stinkers for a guy that you want to build your franchise around or you haven't been your franchise around but you haven't done a great job building your franchise around him is all I'm saying even even um Trey Young admitted that the last playoff run was like lightning in the bottom everything perfectly happened for them to get to the conference finals and I think at the end whenever teams get eliminated from the playoffs I'm gonna do like a retrospective and then what's next for them um so i can't wait to talk about the atlanta hawks because i'm still trying to figure out what the hell they do once they lose this next game or the game after that or the game after that. i don't know they not winning the series then lastly the bulls and the end of yesterday's video i was talking about how my pops was coming over to watch game four with me thank god we rescheduled to game five and i don't think game five is gonna be any better honestly but at least it wasn't this one at least it wasn't this one uh, i don't have i legit don't have anything to say the bulls just i uh, can't score the ball they can't get to the paint. The paint is on absolute lock. Like, I, I think we shot our first free throw in the second half, and that was the second game in a row something like that happened. Nobody can dribble penetrate to get to the basket. DeMar DeRozan can't really get mismatches because Drew Holiday's fighting over every single screen. Uh, nobody else is really stepping up. There's been no bench production. It's just like the better team is winning the series. I don't, I don't know a single sane human being that picked the Chicago Bulls to win this series at all. Uh, the better team is winning. Um, but I will say I'm happy that we're in the playoffs. But the happy to be here shit is done after this year. You know what I'm saying? If the Bulls are just a playoff team next year, that's disappointing to me. It's steps to this, right? It's missing the playoffs, which was last year. It's making the playoffs. Oh, we might be a first round exit. And next year it's like, let's make some noise. Is it the second round? Is it the conference finals? Is it the finals of the goddamn championship? I don't know. But it's going to be more than I'm happy to be here. Right now, listen, the Bulls game is on and we, and we lose about 30. I hate it for sure, but it's not riling me up next year. If this same circumstance and the same outcome was happening, maybe it'll be a little bit different. All right, well, that's that's today's slate of games. Uh, tomorrow, the Brooklyn Nets have an opportunity to not be the only team in the playoffs to be swept in the first round. And that's a lot of pressure. And Ben Simmons said, I'm good, bro. My back hurts. So I'm, I'm actually not going to play tomorrow. So that's that rubs some people the wrong way. And I don't really have an opinion one way or another. I, I, like I said in my video yesterday, I didn't think that him coming was going to really improve anything like that anyway. So it don't even matter to me <laughs> eventually he will hoop but we're gonna have to wait another um what month are we in we in april whew, may june july oh we're gonna wait another three to four months before we see ben simmons maybe maybe we don't even really know